Welcome. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, if, like me, you're an American who has a face, we've got some great news, because this afternoon, the CDC issued new guidelines saying that fully vaccinated Americans can go without masks outdoors except in crowded settings. Oh, yeah, take it off, baby. Show daddy them nostrils. <laughs> Flare them. Mm. This is great news for people who love fresh air, but a little late for those who already have the tan lines. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky explained what they meant by crowded settings. Generally, for vaccinated people, outdoor activities without a mask are safe. However, we continue to recommend masking in crowded outdoor settings and venues, such as packed stadiums and concerts, where there is decreased ability to maintain physical distance and where many unvaccinated people may also be present. Okay, got it. So sex on the beach, no mask. Orgy on the beach, mask. And possibly a snorkel. <laughs> to assess the risk level of various activities, the CDC put out this chart that shows when it's safe for vaccinated and unvaccinated people to go without a mask. Handy chart. Still no word when it's safe to do this. Later in the afternoon, President Biden reminded the nation that not all outdoor gatherings should be mask free. I want to be absolutely clear. If you're in a crowd like a stadium or at a conference or a concert, you still need to wear a mask. Good save, Joe. Although I do love an outdoor conference. <laughs> Next year, I want to go to Burning Businessman. <laughs> Biden had a message for the unvaccinated youths. For those who haven't gotten their vaccination yet, especially if you're younger or think you don't need it, this is another great reason to go get vaccinated now, now. Not sure why he's whispering the most urgent part. It sounds like old man ASMR. Now, now, listen, listen to me. Listen, listen. <laughs> listen to me crinkle this paper. Ooh, I better eat these cherries. <laughs> you feel that full body tingling sensation? That's from the ASMR or the side effects of the vaccine. Now. <laughs> The CDC's new guidelines must be very validating for Fox News host Tucker Carlson seen here trying to squeeze out one of his opinions. Last night, Tucker threw a hissy fit about mask wearing. Masks have always been incompatible with a free society. Masks transform people from citizens into drones. They isolate us, they alienate us, they shut us off from one another. Masks prevent intimacy and human contact. Tucker, masks aren't the reason humans do not want to contact you. It's because you say stupid stuff like this. Even before lockdown, intimacy was not what I was looking for from strangers in public. No one says, gosh, it was so much more personal when you could see the subway masturbator's happy little face. <laughs> then Tucker took his anti-mask crusade to the next level. The only people who wear masks voluntarily outside are zealots, and neurotics. They're the aggressors. It's our job to brush them back and restore the society we were born in. Tucker, I'm going to point out literally the first person you met when you were born was wearing a mask. But old mother Tucker has a way to restore human contact and intimacy to public life, harass other people's kids. As for forcing children to wear masks outside, that should be illegal. Your response when you see children wearing masks as they play should be no different from your response to seeing someone beat a kid in Walmart. Call the police immediately. Contact Child Protective Services. Keep calling until someone arrives. Yes, Tucker wants you to keep kids safe, and the best way to do that is to send an army of Fox News conspiracy goons to the playground to have their parents arrested. But, Tucker, if you're going to spend the summer yelling at kids, you don't have to wear a mask anymore, but I would wear a cup because parents are going to drop kick your balls into your sternum. <laughs> Tucker's not the only one being a mask hole. Early on, conservative activists who uh, chose masks as a wedge issue to fire up their base, and their base continues to smolder about it. Take Temecula, California City Council member Jessica Alexander. Recently, 
The city council held a Zoom hearing in which Alexander went on an odd tangent about how being asked to wear a mask makes her feel. Look at Rosa Parks. She was accommodated in the back of the bus, but she finally took a stand and moved to the front because she knew that that wasn't lawful. It wasn't truth. So she took a stand. I'm getting pushed to the back of the bus. This is what I'm telling you I feel like. I feel like I'm getting pushed to the back of the bus. Wow. Watching her compare herself to Rosa Parks really took away my appetite. I'm a lot like Gandhi that way. <laughs> it was so dumb. One of Alexander's fellow council members just couldn't take it. Check out the woman in the upper left-hand corner. Look at Rosa Parks. There she she is. Was she's she's realizing but where this is going. She cannot believe what she this woman is woman saying at the hearing. And... She decides to so she took a stand. get off that bus. <laughs> but she was not alone. Seconds later, this happened. I'm getting pushed to the back of the bus. This is what I'm telling you I feel like. I feel like I'm getting pushed to the back of the bus. At what point in time do I come out and... But it's not just masks. People are going out of their MAGA heads about the vaccine. And I'll catch you up on the latest in tonight's The Vaccine. So... so, so. Sandman. Get the vaccine boom, 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 boom. so that you don't get COVID 19. Boom, 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 boom. It doesn't matter, Moderna or Pfizer. Boom, boom. Just get one so your grandma doesn't die, sir. Sandman, go get the jab. Boom, boom, boom. It's safe, it's made by scientists in a lab. Boom, 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 boom. I can't stand this quarantine. Salmon, please get the vaccine. Uh, I need a five letter word for that was way too long. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I literally, the ball of yarn went into my cup of coffee. I couldn't do it again if, uh, if, if you, it, I, <laughs> nothing to wipe my hands with. Okay. Welcome to hour two of tonight's monologue. In a story that is the perfect marriage of misinformation in Florida, a <laughs> private school in Miami has barred vaccinated teachers from contact with students. The announcement was made by the school's co-founder and dad's new wife, please give her a chance, <laughs> Layla Sentner. Sentner, who is a prominent Republican donor and anti-vaxxer, wrote a letter to the staff last week claiming that Non-vaccinated people have been negatively impacted by interacting with people who have been vaccinated. It's a conspiracy theory around the internet called SHED. As in, anyone who believes that is not the sharpest tool in the. <laughs> Sentner then took things a step further, claiming that at least three women's menstrual cycles were impacted after having spent time with a vaccinated person. That is ridiculous. Women's menstrual cycles are not impacted by vaccinated people. I believe they're affected by the faces of the moon, crystal frequencies, and some sort of psychic link to Susan Sarandon. <laughs> now, vaccines have no known effect on a woman's fertility, but Sentner is able to get away with endangering teachers' jobs and lives because Sentner Academy is a private school whose motto is cultivating leaders with heart and <laughs> over the leaders with lungs. <laughs> oh, hey! Remember back on January 6th when we weren't sure if we'd still have a country on January 7th? Well, the FBI remembers because they continue to crack down on the insurrectionists, and I'll tell you all about that in tonight's seditionist Roundup Roundup. You have the right to remove silent. Thank you, Sheriff Bessie. First, we have an update on Capitol Rioter and future Oscar-winning Francis McDormand role. Rachel Powell, earlier this year, the FBI charged Powell with busting into the Capitol and, among other things, engaging in violence with an ice axe, a weapon she picked up from either Ari, I'm going to jail or Pata going to prison. <laughs> Powell gained notoriety on January 6th because she was seen barking orders to other rioters with a megaphone, earning her the nickname Bullhorn Lady. Pretty impressive to storm the Capitol with an ice axe and have your nickname be about anything else. Hey, you see that guy in the blue hat? He poops his pants everywhere he goes. Every single place he poops his pants. We call him Little Blue Hat Guy. 
Powell is currently awaiting trial, but one of the conditions the judge gave her for her release was that she must wear a face mask whenever she leaves her home, which is why the court is a little upset when someone posted a video of Powell wearing this mesh mask. Not exactly protective, but you can buy it from the same store that sells fishnet condoms for no one's pleasure. <laughs> Powell apologized to the court for flouting the rules, explaining that her mask was inspired by singer Lana Del Rey. Presumably talking about this mask that Lana Del Rey wore early on in the pandemic. Yeah, it's pretty close. Big difference is that Lana Del Rey's mask had a layer of plastic beneath it, whereas Powell's mask appears to be just mesh. Although we'll never know for sure because after she was caught, Powell threw away the mask. Classic innocent behavior. If I killed a guy, there'd be blood on my carpet. And you'll never find blood on my carpet because I threw my carpet in the ocean and it sank real good because it was a guy rolled up inside. <laughs> We also have a new update about New York resident and depressed Wolverine, Robert Chapman. Chapman has been charged by the Justice Department, uh, but what's interesting was how he got caught. See, he was finally apprehended after he was turned in by someone he matched with on the dating app Bumble after he bragged about his exploits on January 6th. Aw, kind of sweet that he's on Bumble. He's just looking for a nice girl to share an ice axe with. She's out there, buddy. Actually, they caught her. She's in there with you. Chapman really brought his A-game to his flirty texts, bragging, I did storm the Capitol. I made it all the way into Statuary Hall and did an interview with Robert O'Mara of the Washington Post, to which he replied, we are not a match. <laughs> it's too bad. He was hoping she would swipe all right. What's weird is that when she said, we are not a match, he replied, I suppose not. Where was that easygoing c'est la vie attitude on January 6th, buddy? How nice would it have been to see all you a-holes walking up the steps chanting, you win some, you lose some. There are other fish in the sea. This is a chance to work on me. I'm gonna take a pottery class. That's what you do, right? When you break up, you take a pottery class? Yeah, you do. Did you take a pottery class? Not when I broke up, but I did take a pottery class. Why'd you take it? With my sister, for fun. Okay. Is it too painful to remember? <laughs> How long are we now, Chris? Are we long? Are we, are we long? So long? We're so long? Is the monologue going a little long right now? <laughs> How long now? Now that I've just paused for a long period of time, is that getting bad? It's better. It's better. You see, you gotta free up. Don't have the mask on. I'm all free, you see? Next up on the roundup, we got an update on Capitol writer Richard Barnett seen here pointing at his Proud Boys. You may remember Barnett left a note on Nancy Pelosi's desk calling the Speaker of the House a bitch, but his attorney just floated a unique argument for why he should be released, saying that in the note he left for the Speaker, he called her a biatch, not a bitch. Hold on a second. What does that matter? He wasn't charged with potty mouth. Your Honor, we freely admit my client, Mr. Dahmer, ate those people, but in his defense, I will point out, he did start with the salad fork. Now, technically, he didn't call her either of those things because in the actual note, he called her a biat de, as his attorney explained in the court filing. Instead of writing the accusatory, you bitch, as the government falsely states, it only says biat de. <laughs> and without the word you, the D was meant to be two letters, C and H, with the C connected to an H to spell the word biatch. Who knows what's true at this point? One thing we know for sure, these lawyers are charging by the hour. <laughs> Their brief went on to say, C makes the same sound as a K, except in this case, because it's followed by an H. So it makes a CH sound. You see, the K sound is derived from classical Greek, while CH comes from modern French. How many hours have I built? Daddy's buying a boat. <laughs> well, despite these crazy, crazy, stupid, crazy arguments, today, a judge let him out of jail. Son of a biatch. <laughs> hey, we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Senator Amy Klobuchar and Kyle McLaughlin. But when we come back, California might be in the market for a new governor. Maybe you.